Gaunt says, this is one of the most famous monologues from the play. Methinks I am a prophet, new inspired, and thus expiring do foretell of him. His rash, fierce blaze of riot cannot last, for violent fires soon burn out themselves. Small showers last long, but sudden storms are short. He tires betimes that spurs too fast betimes, with eager feeding food doth choke the feeder. Light vanity, insatiate cormorant, consuming means, soon preys upon himself. This royal throne of kings, this sceptered isle, this earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden, demi-paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the hand of war, this happy breed of men, this little world, this precious stone set in the silver sea, which serves it in the office of a wall or as a moat defensive to a house against the envy of less happier lands, this blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England, this nurse, this teeming womb of royal kings, feared by their breed and famous by their birth, renowned for their deeds, as far from home for Christian service and true chivalry, as is the sepulchre and stubborn jewry of the world's ransom, blessed Mary's son, this land of such dear souls, this dear, dear land, dear for her reputation through the world, is now leased out. I die pronouncing it, like to a tenement or pelting farm, England, bound in with the triumphant sea, whose rocky shore beats back the envious siege of watery Neptune, is now bound in with shame, with inky blots and rotten parchment bonds. That England that was wont to conquer others hath made a shameful conquest of itself. Ah, would this scandal vanish with my life? How happy then were my ensuing death. Shakespeare is now at the height of his powers. I mean, I, I, I defy anybody to disagree with me here that this play, I talked about how some of the other plays you've read, including King John, a little bit spottier, uh, some, some good stuff, some of his, you know, Shakespeare's still great, but like some of the less stuff, lesser stuff is in that play. This play, it's just like one incredible moment after another. This dying man um, who expresses in this love for his, his nation, right? I mean, this is what you see um, just the physical love of the land, right? The love of the earth. This is what we get too from, like we make fun of boomers a lot, but boomers have this for America. Um, and you need this for your country if you're going to fight for it, right? You need to believe that this is a special land. And there are many like it, but this one is mine. I've said that before, right? This it, It's not that like we hate India or something, or we hate other countries. Um, it's that this place is ours and we love it. And therefore we believe that it is beloved of God because God loves us. Right. Um, and so the, the specificity of it and the description of the geographic England, um, and the description of divine favor corrupted, right. And, and betrayed. And that's why he's so uh, hateful toward, uh, Richard the man, right? And this, this is sometimes referred to as the king's two bodies. There was a book in 1957, Ernst Kantorowicz, uh, about this very problem. Um, and if you watch now the, the, like the crown, um, that Netflix series, um, it's all about this. Every, every like, you know, mini series or movie that's made about the English monarchy is basically about this, that movie they made recently about Diana, like, you know, nobody's come up with anything more profound to say about the monarchs and their implications for political power than Shakespeare. Most uh, things that you watch now, you'll now see it everywhere. Now that I've ruined every modern take on uh, the British monarchy for you, you'll see it everywhere. And not just in stuff about England, but stuff about America too. This is the central conflict at the heart of politics in a fallen world. Um, and you'll see it everywhere. It happens in the crown. It happens in like, you know, the, the all, all the stuff that you watch about this, this, uh, project. It's all here. 